Bonjour and bonsoir. This is Bastille Day after. Yeah, after. We all <laughs> celebrated and had a great time. It's time, however, dear friends, to enjoy wine style and to enjoy life and wine in style. We need Todd, a little burgundy. So, Todd, what do you think about burgundy, Chardonnay? Uh, I think burgundy would be the appellation that I would drink all day long if, if God let me, actually. <laughs> The, what about if JC, the, the, the present GCB, God, next to you the, the, allows the, you? The, 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 <laughs> mm, man, it's just Ooh. so beautiful. What do you smell in this beautiful liquid gold? It's, it's the essence of fragrance. It's very aromatic. It's very me. aromatic. It's brush aromatic. And the color is lovely where you have, it's a kind of a, a, a beautiful golden without being deep toasted straw. It's, it still has a lot of color of the fruit. Doesn't he look good, ladies and gentlemen? Todd himself! Todd, dear friends, is managing the whole cheese program and charcuterie program at the famous Oakville Grocery. Look at his world! I mean, that's the world I want to be in. It's it's a culture for sure. I want to lay the cheese. I want to <laughs> eat it all. <laughs> that drives me wild! There's yeah, only a few places I get as wild as here. <laughs> Cheese stores can have an effect on people, it clearly so it, it does. And, and there's no reason not to have the effect on people. It's, it's genius. It brings animals to the table. I, like, a lot of people bring animals to the table, but not in this way, not in the same way as cheese does. Um, That's actually very well said. I've never looked at it this way. It actually but is. But at least it's the animal products of what product. they generate. But right, yeah, yeah, you know, like, with, and the animal is still around to kind of enjoy you enjoying it, as opposed to say a it's steak. It's safer than a blood sausage or the whole chicken. Right. <laughs> he won't uh, produce any more of that chicken. Yeah, the whole chicken is really good for everybody except for the chicken. <laughs> the, so the, but the, again, because of Bastille Day and in the store, I have to say personally, I'm kind of a francophile when it comes to cheese, and while we do feature California and particularly local cheeses, when in doubt. France wins out, uh, and so in honor of and it has event, nothing to do with no, me. of course not. Totally I independent it, of my taste. Didn't help me getting hired here or nothing. Um, uh, the uh, what we've done though is two classics today. Um, one of them is goat, and one of them is cow. Uh, the goat cheese today is is a pyramid, is what it's marketed as now, but there is, in France, when you are there in the Loire Valley, and for two, you can get a, what's known as a Valencé, and it's in the Loire Valley, each of the little towns has a shape of the cheese that they produce, and in this case, a Valencé, they do a flat top pyramid. I mean, I'm using my finger that haven't been cleaned for weeks, so, of right. course, specifically after Bastille Day, so, like, <laughs> but look, dear friends, how gorgeous, Valencé, blooming Blooming Rhine cheese that has an interesting history. That when originally, uh, yeah, when originally uh, formed, thank you. Um, it was a cheese designed in honor for uh, the Emperor Napoleon, and when and it was a full pyramid in the shape of the Grand Pyramid. And he had had a somewhat difficult campaign through Europe, you know, through Egypt rather. And when rumors of this had met the house where this grand pyramid cheese was going to be served, the Lord Talleyrand took out his sword, as this is the legend, and lopped off the top because apparently the Napoleonic uh, Council did not want to see any more pyramids. They were good with that. Um, and so Valencé was born. And it's a really beautiful cheese. You know what I want to do, if you don't mind? Absolutely. Let's be entrepreneurial. Wow. And you can sort of see this rind, this one's in perfect shape. The, you get a bit of what's known as rind ring, and it's underneath the blossoming rind, and it's a bit of liquidy, goat's milky beauty. And then on the inside, there's a cake with the texture of a, well, they, they call it a pate, and it really does have a pate texture. Oh, this one just has the barn all over it. This is like, the, the, the goats are headed that way, and the wind is blowing this way, and this is a cheese to eat with white wine, brilliant with white wine. Uh, because it's sharp and it's tangy and a big warm white wine, big buttery warm in a, in a bottomy sense, not a temperature sense. Uh, white wine with a lot of depth and character is going to like this addition of acid to the top. I cannot tell you how suave and rich and intense and mouth-filling the two are together. 
I mean that beautiful ring that you show Man. shows perfection. Man. This is the perfect time to take it and enjoy it. And I got to tell you, dear friends, what Todd does so well is understand the timeline of cheese. Because cheese is born, grows in age, has a peak, and then obviously it's not as great if you wait too long. So he knows the timing and he does the affinage that is so precious in the world of cheese. Well, hopefully we try to sell the cheeses and you try to serve them at a point, or a point, a right? Point. Uh, yeah. But obviously, <laughs> It's funny because some people will come in here and there are cheeses I keep on hand because everybody has a different taste for things. And without fail, this is a little Celsius share that has been out and it looks brown and it doesn't look that appealing. But without fail, we'll have somebody come in here and say, and usually, frankly, it's an old French guy, and, I and he's going to say, that is perfect. How did you make it like this? How did you do this? Why did you do this? It's perfect. And it, it'll be like, here you go, my friend. It's for you. Um, because everybody likes cheese in a different place. I mean, I personally like it more like that, personally. But this is actually pretty good. As a family, my parents had a little cage where we ate cheese in the summer outside nice. in the shade. And specifically with goat cheese, you want them to be hard. And in this case, yeah. older. Yeah. And that mushroom feel is amazing on the cheese. An old Cotin de Chavignol. Looks like a little dropping of the animal that made it, frankly, but yum, delicious, you know? You want to be on four legs and go after it and eat every one of them. And we have them as aperitif in France. Yeah, know? they're a starter, yeah. That's it, we love that. So good cheese, fabulous, it's good. Congratulation, not easy to get. Remember the Pyramide. Yeah, Pyramid. It's a Loire Valley. It's seasonal as to how ripe it is. That's some of the other things about it. At certain times of year, right now, in, in midsummer, they're in, they're in shape because the kidding has been finished and the milk is still flowing and the cheeses are only a couple of weeks old and they're pasteurized, which is how we can get them this way. Um, and fantastic. So come on in and get a Pyramid. I have a couple of other uh, shapes and sizes too. And that's a piece of art. This. I mean, look at this. This is purple this is phenomenal. the other. This is another cheese. I think this cheese loves Chardonnay for a couple of reasons. It's called Morbier, and this is a cow's milk cheese. In this case, it's raw, which means the cheese has aged for 60 days. It's from a company called Monsire that is considered the, one of the best Morbier companies in the world. They make raclette too. They do a couple of other things. It's an Alpine cheese or a, 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 a foothills of the Alps cheese. But what is really a good story about uh, Morbier, my for me, is that whenever Whenever you see a cheese that has a very fine cut in curd, which would be things like Gruyere or Emmentaler or Appenzeller or uh, Comte, um, that means that 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 means that where, where that cheese was made originally, the cheesemakers would have to bring salt with them on the back of donkeys, and so the more salt they had to carry, the harder the load for the animals that were making the cheese with them. So, the way to avoid having to use that much salt was to cut the curd finely, 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 and then press it. And so you get a cheese that's quite firm and compressed. And um, if, as opposed to cheddar, which is a place that's made in a lot of, with a lot of salt. And so you can have your curds be pretty big and you can kind of squeeze it and let it dry in a cloth bandage. And, and that's called cheddaring. It's a different style of cheese making. But what's cool about Morbier is be, because the animals make 30 gallons a day each, you have to do something with the curd. And in the days before refrigeration, you would milk the animal and you would make the cheese right away and by cooking it a little bit and you'd create a curd and then ash from the fire would be laid over the cheese for the daytime while it sat there and the animals were out in the pasture eating again and the ash was to prevent flies. Similar to the same reason why tapas began because a cracker was put on the sherry right. to keep the flies out of the sherry and so one grand idea after another the, the ash is laid down and then the cow is brought in from the field and milked again and the second curd goes on the top. So one of the curds is a day milking and one of the curds is a night milking. And so when you get one like this, if you actually split the cheese in half down the, the line, these have, they're the same flavor and they're the same animal and the same milk, but the textures are different on these cheeses. One of them is chewier, with less fat because the animals have been chugging around all day and the other side is big and creamy and buttery and that's because the animal has been sleeping standing up all night and gets milk in the morning before it goes out. So I love this cheese for so that. So do you like the morning or the evening? I like both sides. Ha, ha, ha. That's a good answer. So with that, we have a famous wine. Oh, yes. 
made by Gregory Patria, an amazing winemaker who's been a great friend of 21 years. And he makes this amazing charismatic Chardonnay from Les Ursulines, which is the order of the Ursuline sisters, were the winery of my parents, Jean-Claude and Claudine Boisset, started in 1961. Nice. So this is an old historical cellar from 1640. And this is a great wine, screw cap, which makes it very cool and easy to go on your picnic, on your cheese journey, morning or evening. Yes. Have this wine for breakfast. It's actually highly recommended by all the local doctors of Burgundy. 10 a.m., a 10 a.m. juice. It's outstanding. <laughs> and this, <laughs> doctor with that 10 a.m. chewy. A. This, this is a good morning pairing, by the way. Good morning pairing. But I'm gonna try more. You know, I have to say something about this while we're here. One of the great things about working for you, my friend, is the nature, while the, there's always this great cheese and this great food, um, what has really been impressive for me has been the historical context of the buildings that we're standing in and the work that you're doing with other historical buildings and sites in our neighborhood and now in France. You just bought, acquired something in Normandy, so you can actually go up and down. You can spend a week in France and hit a different winery in a different region for every day and be with Jean-Charles the entire time which is impressive. For and morning cheese, morning liquid gold, right, all the way to the end of the day. To Marseille. They, uh, um, it's, it's great to be involved in the history and uh, uh, place that we're uh, experiencing here. It's a, it's a joy and a blessing to be living in the Napa Valley, well, but particularly uh, to be learning so much about it since I've been here, man, it's been great. Thank, Thank you, Todd. Cheers. Well, to Todd, who is running this amazing program, we're so excited, Colin, come for cheese and a cheese tasting, a cheese breakfast, as we posted a few days ago, and Burgundy wine sometimes. Salute. Santé.